we're going to talk about angle relationships and circles. So continuing on, talking about circles. Now we're going to talk about some of the um, angle, or more of the angle relationships within the circle, section 11.5. Angle relationships and circles. If a tangent and a secant, or a chord, intersect on a circle at the point of tangency, then the measures of the angle formed is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Well, that looks similar to something we've already done. So what that means here is if the arc, let's say, let's say the arc is 100 degrees. Well, that means my angle is then going to be 50 because it is half of the arc. Now, that is the same for inscribed angles, right? So there's nothing new there. Okay, nothing too much new. The next one, though, this one's new. If two secants or chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is half the sum of the measures of its intercepted arc. So what that means here is AC and BD are the arcs. <coughs> to find the angles on the inside, which first of all, those red angles are what type of angles? Vertical angles. Vertical angles are always in group. The vertical angles would be half of the arcs added together. Okay, so for example here, if I said the left one had an arc measure of 60, the right one had an arc measure of 40. I would add those and I would get 100 divided by 2. That means my two angles are going to be 50 degrees. Okay, that's what that is saying right there. So number one here, angle relationships in the circles. I want to find each measure. I want to find the angle of FGH here. So the arc is 216, so the whole arc is 216, which means my angle is going to have a measure then of, what do you say, Drew? 108 degrees. How did you figure that out, Drew? 216 divided by 2. Number 2, the angle is 64. Well, that's going to make my arc, what do you say, Frosty? 128 degrees. And how did you find that, Frost? Uh, you multiply 64 times 2. 64 times 2, nice job. Well, next one here, now this is the chords. So I'm going to find each measure here. First one I want to do is I'm going to find angle JML. Well, as I look here, the angles in red, what type of angles are those? Those are? Vertical, vertical angles are always? Congruent. So what do I do with the two arcs then here? I would add them, 70 plus 52, and then divide them by 2. So 122 divided by 2 gets me? 61 degrees. What does this look very similar to right here? Uh, average. average, right? Yeah, nice job. So it's just like the inscribed angles or the angles on the inside. Yeah, you add them up and divide by two. Good work. Uh, four, angle STR. So here's angle STR. Notice the angles in red. What type of angles are those? Those are vertical angles. So what am I going to do with my arcs? I'm going to and divide by. So 107 plus 99 divided by 2. I add them, I end up getting 206 divided by 2, and I get 103 degrees. Nice job. Using that information, take a couple seconds, try numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, using all that same information, take a couple seconds, try these. Number five, I want to find the angle of FGH here. Hannah, what would the angle of FGH be? What would you say? No? FGH would be how many degrees and all? Uh, 45. 45 degrees. How would you find that? No? Yep, 90 divided by 2, which is 45 degrees. And then the next one, 75 degrees. If the angle is 75, what would my arc be? Oh, Jack, what'd you say? And how'd you find that, Jack? Nice job. Okay, and then I have number seven. I want to find angle U or YUV. How would I find that angle, Jersey? Add them, 154 plus 78, and divide them by, and you get 116 degrees. 
And the last one, number eight, I want to find angle QPR. Ryan, what'd you get? And how'd you get that, Ryan? Nice job. 70 plus 40 is 110 divided by 2 is 55 degrees. Good work. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is if two segments intersect in the exterior of a circle. Up to this point, all of our intersections and angles have been on the inside. Now we're talking about intersections on the outside. Then the measure of the angle formed is half the difference of the measures of its intercepted arcs. So what that means here is every one of these, doesn't matter what type of, it is, doesn't matter what type of lines they are, if your angles are on the outside, now you're going to take half of the difference of the arcs. Okay. Um, so it's half the difference of the arcs. Um, notice here, on the example, it tells me the arc here is 142. Well, how do you know what the other arc is? You would subtract from 360. Why would we subtract from 360? Because it's a whole circle, and it has to add up to 360. So 360 minus 142 is 218. So they did one half of 218 minus 142, which got me to 38 degrees. And there was my angle there. <coughs> okay. Good work. Um, again, I would make sure to recognize that. Let's look at number nine here. Find the value of x. So angles on the outside. Anytime you have an angle on the outside, what are you going to do with your two arcs now? You're going to subtract them. So I take 140 minus 74 and then divide it by 2. So 140 minus 74 gets me 66. Divide that by 2 and my angle is 33 degrees. Number 10. Okay, number 10. These are the tangent lines. Everybody see other tangent lines here? Yeah. Remember, tangents go to one point. So if this arc is 232, what would the arc on the, I'll call that the inside, I guess. What would the inside arc be? Ryan? One what? Isn't it 128? Right, it's 128. And how'd you get that, Ryan? Very good. So now that I have my two arcs, now how do I find x? What would I have to do to find x here, Tyler? Two thirty-two minus one twenty-eight divide that by two. I think I end up with what's that? One hundred and four divided by two, which is then fifty-two degrees. Nice job. Um, take a couple seconds, try numbers 11. If you can, try number 12. Number 12 is a little bit tougher. I'd like you to try it before we work through it, though. Do number 11. You can do number 11, and then take a couple seconds, try number 12 as well. So let's try number 11 here. How would you find angle X, Jessica? Okay. 75 minus 29 divided by 2. Nice job. And you got an answer of what? What would you say? This 23? Yeah, 23 degrees. Nice job. All right. Now, moment of truth on number 12. Does anybody think they have the right answer? Caprio? Ooh, yeah, a lot of them think we got it. Caprio, what do you think, man? It is 38 degrees. How'd you figure that out, Caprio? Yeah, so 108 minus 70. Now, why do you multiply by 2? You kind of just went backwards there, right? You could think of it algebraically if you wanted to. You know, 108 minus x over 2 equals 35. And if you do that algebraically, you then multiply by 2, which gets you the 70, and then you subtract the other way. So 108 minus 70 gets me the 38. Nice job. Um, again, you kind of just have to go backwards through that process. All right, take a couple seconds, try numbers, or try these four, 13, 14, 15, 16 now. Same idea. Number 16 is kind of challenging. Number 16 is fairly challenging. Okay? But you should be able to do 13, 14, and 15 without any problems. So number 15. I want to find angle X. What does X come out to be, Tina? 
It is 40 degrees. How'd you find that out? Nice job. Number 14. What do you have for an answer to 14, Noah? Uh, How'd you find that? Nice job. 15. How'd you get 15, Peyton? 15? Yeah. Nice job. So the first thing you got to do is find that arc on the outside there, which was 360 minus 116. That's 244. Then take 244 minus 116 divided by 2. And what did you get, Peyton, then? What? What did you say the answer was? 64 degrees. All right. Number 16. Does anybody want to take one last shot? Think they have it. 31. It is not 31 degrees. Okay. Now, here, what? It is 4. How do we get 4? Now, watch here, please. Okay. We know that this line, this blue line right here, that is a diameter, right? Yeah. So I know that this has to be 180 degrees. Yeah. So I know the other side has to be how many? 180. However, the common mistake, oh. the common mistake is everybody thinks that this has to be 32. No. These two angles together have to be 32. So the two arcs together have to add to get 38, but they have to have a difference of what? 24. So do you're thinking of two numbers that add to get 32, subtract to get 24, those two numbers are 28 and 4. So that means x has to equal 4 degrees there. That was a little bit tougher because not everybody forgets, everybody forgets about the angle on the other side, the arc on the other side. Here's your assignment though.